First of all, I'd like to say thank God for each and every one who came out tonight to support us in this endeavor. We're here because of there's a human cry for justice. And there has not been a forum for the people. We're here to help you, and we're here to represent you. So we want you to tell your stories. That's what it's all about. Don't hold back anything. Just let it all go. We just want you to know. NAACP is here. Clergy is here to help you. You have someone you can cover. To. And I know that oftentimes the police will make you think that there's nobody that you can go to. But we want you to know that we're here. Because of the damage that was done to his stump. 
This is all due to an incident that happened on May the 1st from Rochester Police Department um, and to the community and to um, Bishop McCuller and to all of you who are here today and um, those who are in witness. Yeah, enough is enough. Amen. And I would just like to say it has to stop. Um, we're asking, you know, the community, we're asking the churches, the preachers, the pastors um, to come together. And I just want to thank Bishop McCuller for a time such as now. This place should have been packed tonight. Amen because it's a need out here in human justice and that yet nothing being justified or done about it. May God bless you and have a smile upon you.
And there was a situation I was sitting in front of my house. A police officer by the name of Daryl Pearson pulled up. We were in the car. They proceeded to get out of the car, uh, guns drawn. They pulled us out of the car. I have a basketball shorts, so one of the officers said, one of the officers said, the shorts are in his butt, so he thinks he stuck it in his butt. Crack he was talking about. So I'm telling him, like, I don't got nothing in my butt, man, you can check me. So they proceeded to pull down my pants. Pour it on my pants, put a glove on, pour it on my pants, spread my butt cheeks. Like he must have put it all the way up in there. I'm like, man, listen, if there's anything in there, take me downtown, put me on the machine, see if there's anything in there. So let me go. Comes and gets me again. The other, other officer comes and checks my front half, pulls me down. I'm talking about everything exposed. Pulls me down, checks my front half, and it's nothing there. So they put me in the car. I'm like, what are you charging me with? Well, we're just going to run. I said, if I'm not under arrest, under arrest, take me out of the car. So once they seen, I knew what I was talking about a little bit. They proceeded to let me out of the car. I called 911 to file a complaint. They were letting my friend go. So then they said, you know what? Since he wants to be, excuse my language, I'm not going to cuss him but a D head, arrest his friend. So they arrested my friend for an AUO in a parked car. So they arrested him, take him to jail. So I go to file a complaint, and I couldn't help but notice on Lyle Avenue when you go to file a complaint, this is a big glass building that they make you go to, and you got to sit in this glass building. You got a bunch of people walking by you, and they're wondering what you're in there for. So they're looking like, what is he in there for? Is he snitching? What is he doing? What is this place? Because half the people that's out there don't even know what it's for. So and this is what we go to tell on the police. So they sit you out there, 15 minutes, a bunch of people walking by, wondering why you're in there or whatever. And at this time, I'm not going to even lie, I was still in the streets. I wasn't doing nothing illegal, but you know, I don't want to be telling on the police. I mean, telling on nobody or however the community don't look at you. But I looked at that, and now as I look back on it, I mean, that's a, that's, a, that's a method for intimidation. You know, you sit us in this room, it's a glass room. I've never seen this much glass nowhere in the city. It's a glass room they sit you in, and they make you sit there and wait. Then they come out and they talk to you or whatever. So my whole situation came. I had a lawsuit against the uh, Rochester City Police, uh, which my lawyer ended up telling me, well, you know, we're going to go through it. probably get $10,000. I said, you know what, don't even go through it. Because my pride in, 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 in me as a man is way more worth, worth way more than $10,000. So basically going on with everything, and the uh, department, whatever that department is called, we go through, they say they couldn't find any evidence that it happened. I mean, if I said it happened, I mean, I don't know what other evidence you need to say it happened. I had witnesses there, we went through the whole process or whatever. But basically, they're forgiven for that. I, I don't even, they're forgiven for that. My thing is, right now, you know, we want to combat a problem, we want to fight a problem, but look at the only two people that's here. How can we fight racism against our people if it's the only two here, people here is the brothers? We need more people active that's, that doesn't look like us. We can't, we, can't, we can't possibly fight this problem if every time that something happened, Chief Shepard won that come, or another brother won that come. Where, where's the rest of the force? We need, we need to get people in here that don't look like us. I mean, they spend eight hours in the community every day. They're a part of the community. So when you got something like this that's after hours, they may be off, I don't know how the union work or whatever, but it shows no commitment on their behalf. I know it's only a little bit of people in here, but we represent various parts of the city. So we want to change, but it can't be just us that wants to change. We know we do wrong. We know we have wrong. We, listen, nobody's perfect. But if we constantly look at it, looking at it as, well, they have a job to do. They have a job to do. We have a job to do, too. We want to be productive citizens and live in society in peace. We don't want to be harassed constantly and to feel like we don't belong. It's like, how, how don't we belong in our own community? I can't go to Hilton and tell nobody to get up off their steps. You can't see it. I can't go to Greece and tell nobody, you can't sit on your porch or you can't watch me harass this person. I have the God-given right to sit there and film, do whatever I want to do, as long as I'm not intervening with what's going on. Right. But so often times when we pull out a camera or something, 
we're then harassed, and then we're then beaten, our brains beaten, you know what I'm saying, that we're being uncooperative, and then they send you downtown and you got this violation, disorderly conduct. How many people have been arrested for disorderly conduct? What is it? What is it? What is it when you actually activate your right and tell them, leave me alone, get up. What are you doing? You're doing too much. But it's like they have to, they take this level and it's like, it, they have they have to win. They have to win. I have no, I, the utmost respect for the police department. But I mean, wrong is wrong and right is right. And I just want everybody to be treated fairly. I want it to be a, because this, this city is a city that's small enough to be taken back if we all just communicate. The biggest problem right now is miscommunication. Because if you, if you, if you're harassing innocent people that's coming to try to help the problem, I want to make sure everything compliant because you make it use this video if he act up. But it's like, I mean, 